And for the first time in its 59-year history, a woman is now the top commander at the U.S. Air Force Academy. Lieutenant General Michelle Johnson takes over the college at a critical time. Jan Crawford is in Arlington, Virginia, and recently sat down with her. Jan, good morning. Well, good morning, Nora. You know, Johnson spent part of her career here at the Pentagon, and it's a career that's really taken her all over the globe, and now she's landed in Colorado Springs. We went out and visited with her during her second week on the job, and she is just a force of nature. I, I've got to tell you, I mean, she's had this remarkable life story and now facing some big challenges, including that growing problem of sexual harassment in the military. Carry on. Thanks Lieutenant General Michelle Johnson has lived life being a first. The first woman to lead the Air Force Academy 36 years after she enrolled here and became the first female to be a cadet wing commander. People are wondering, why would you want to do this? And I would say, well, the same reason you want to do it. Did but, you hear that from fellow cadets? Yeah, everybody in the institution. It was a time of change in our nation. And, and in these kinds of institutions, people couldn't imagine that mix. I mean, look at this. This is inspiring. I mean, but Johnson always has been a woman who sees no obstacles. Growing up on a farm in Iowa, she was a state champion in track and star basketball player. But she wondered what was beyond her Midwestern horizon. I used to go into you know, low buildings on a farm, like the, the hog houses, if you will, or low barns, so my, my dog and I could climb to the top and we could see the horizon of the earth out there. And I said, man, that's a big world out there. I'd like to get out in there and see what I can do. At the academy, Johnson again excelled and today remains the college's second leading scorer in basketball. She was a Rhodes Scholar and then embarked on a career that included flying transport planes and refueling tankers. She even reported to two presidents, George H.W. Bush and Bill Clinton, carrying top secret nuclear codes. Johnson now is responsible for more than 4,000 cadets, nearly a quarter are women. A major issue she must confront is sexual harassment. Last year, up to 26,000 military members reported being sexually assaulted, including high-profile cases in the service academies and also against officers, some who led sexual assault prevention programs. When you have officers who have been charged with sexual assault who are responsible for preventing it, yeah. I mean, what kind of message does that send? It's hurtful. I mean, I think our, all our leadership in the Air Force has said how hurtful that is, and it's, it's, it's not right. We can't have it. Sexual assault is a crime. Johnson tackled the issue the first day she spoke to new cadets. When you cross those boundaries, there's a human cost to that. There's a lifetime human cost on both parties, and that's what we need to be aware of. Her words carry weight. Okay. But in meetings with flight instructors and at lunch with the cadets, she comes across as engaging and approachable. She's been here, and she's been through it, the worst of it. As a cadet in the late 1970s, Johnson's class, the second to include women, was 12 percent female. It wasn't easy. What would you hear uh, most often? I mean, what's something that really stands out at you, an experience that you had? Um, you know, you shouldn't be here. Why have you come? Other cadets would yeah, tell you right, that. Yeah. Men. Yeah, yeah. And, other, you know, there were faculty back then, too, who just couldn't wrap their brains around it. You've obviously broken a lot of barriers. Um, as a woman. I mean, have you ever personally experienced sexual harassment? I've had people um, question and challenge me, but I wouldn't say in terms of physically that way. There have been things along the way I've been able to handle. It hasn't been institutionalized. It hasn't been someone abusing power or authority. It's been someone who, you know, maybe is blockheaded, frankly, or make it difficult. I'm not, I'm not going to say that didn't happen. Johnson says she considers herself fortunate, and that's her attitude across the board. She's also a mother of 10-year-old twin boys. Her husband retired from the military to be home with them. Now she sees her mission as educating the next generation of military leaders, young men and women. Now, when you watch Johnson in action and, and when you talk to her, you get the sense that she's almost indomitable, but she says she faced her biggest challenge after the twins were born. She started having trouble with her vision, so she went to the doctor and she was diagnosed to her shock with multiple sclerosis. Now, she says her symptoms are minimal, that she's able to manage it, and she doesn't even mind talking about it. You know, Charlie, Nora, Gail, I think that her approach to MS in many ways is uh, reflective of her approach to life. You know, she says, you just can't quit before you absolutely have to. And you've got to stay positive and, and keep the hope. And you just keep going.
Great. And that's what she does very, very well. Great story. Amazing woman. Thank you, Jan Crawford.